Hey guys, Trigger Happy John coming at you with a Diablo Immortal video. Today's video, as you can see here, we have the trailer going on where you can see the mobile device that could be used to play Diablo Immortal. The purpose of this video is going to be explaining to you what the minimum requirements are going to be needed to play Diablo Immortal on both a mobile device and on your PC. As of the time of recording this video, this is going to be pre-launch. I did play the beta, so I did have a little bit of experience as far as how the game was, how it functioned on the PC, as well as how it functioned on the mobile device. At the time, I was using a Galaxy Samsung Galaxy S10 5G. The game went smooth, but the requirements uh, were a little bit iffy. We had a lot of testing. A lot of people did report what kind of devices they could use. The purpose of this video is I'm gonna show you and kind of explain to you what the requirements are. Also, what are some of your options that you could be using to go ahead and play the game and enjoy the game if you by chance don't have a high-end PC or a PC in general, or if all you've got to work with is your cell cellular device. So definitely stay tuned. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. All right, so like I stated at the beginning of the video, guys, uh, essentially Diablo Immortal, with it coming out and it being an actual mobile game, uh, a lot of people are gonna be interested to know, okay, what devices can they be using for this mobile game? Are there gonna be restrictions? I feel like a lot of people are really curious what kind of district restrictions there is going to be. What kind of cell phone can they use? Uh, what other avenues are they gonna to have to play this game? In Diablo series past, we've been able to play these mostly only on PCs. Uh, Diablo 3 did get ported over to consoles, which was very nice and uh, really opened up controller support. I know during the beta, it was a real hot topic as far as, okay, are they gonna add in controller support for this game? And it was funny, as the beta progressed and as we're all playing it and really enjoying it, uh, a lot of people were able to kind of figure out a way or a backdoor channel, so to speak, on how to actually get the uh, PS4 and Xbox controller to connect to their device, then map out the controls. Uh, I, I believe there's a lot of videos where they talked about this during the beta, however, we no longer need to worry about those type of things moving forward with this game because thankfully Blizzard and their infinite knowledge understood the fact that we really wanted to play this game. We wouldn't be able to go hard on it. And if we're willing to take this much effort to connect a controller to our cell phones to be able to play the game, that maybe they should add controller support and PC support. And sure enough, they did. Now, the thing to note with that and why I bring this up and why the point of this video is because not all controllers, not all PCs, not all cell phones are going to be the same. There's going to be a lot of variants that we're going to see, such as, um, for example, iPhones versus Android phones. Which one's going to perform better? You're going to have a PS4 versus Xbox controller. Which one really fits you? Is it going to be the Xbox controller that you feel like maps out the best, has the best mechanics? Or is it going to be the PlayStation controller? Like for example, myself, I am a PlayStation 5 owner. I will probably be using this controller once support is added. Once the game relaunches, currently, PS5 is not supported. I may have to go buy a PS4 controller to connect it to my device to play this game. And you know what? At the end of the day, if I have to do that, I will because this is going to be a game that's going to have a lot of repeatability and a lot of grinding. It's definitely going to be worth your time to figure out a better way to play this game instead of just your basic stock cell phone because what's going to what you're going to run into is, um, you know, you're going to be using your thumbs, which is fine. Notice my comment on there. Thumbs are fine. They were. However, they did cover up a lot of the screen. So if you are someone who's a super competitive player, or if you're in a big raid or a dungeon, uh, you wanna be able to see everything on the screen. So when you have your thumbs in the way, you won't be able to see nearly as much on the screen. So you're gonna to wanna to kinda of have your thumbs out on the side. Uh, that brings me into the things like, um, you know, are you gonna be able to use like a, the Steam Deck? A lot of people are talking about, well, the Steam Deck can be hacked a little bit and it can be um, rooted essentially. I don't know if you guys remember this back in the old Android days, and you can possibly get blue stacks on your Steam Deck, which then would allow you to play Diablo Immortal on blue stacks or LD player. Links down below, by the way, for both of those. Uh, if you're interested in having an Android emulator on your PC versus the PC client, uh, or if you want to try this for yourself on your own Steam Deck, uh, 
but they're saying that this could possibly be a thing so steam deck may be an option we know this isn't going to work on the nintendo switch so we don't have a whole lot of big mobile devices However, there are things like the Razer Kichi. Now, if I go ahead and I type this in here on, uh, on Amazon. Okay, so this did pull up the Razer Kichi. Now, with the Razer Kichi, this is going to be a device that will allow you to uh, attach it to your cell phone. Notice I have the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. It's a rather big phone. It's got a nice screen to it. Uh, I could connect a Bluetooth device controller, such as the PS4 controller or one of the Xbox controller series. Um, Xbox One controller series to it via Bluetooth and play the game via that way. That's totally a valuable option. It'll work. Uh, but the thing to note here is by using a device like this Kishi, one, it's on sale. So if you're going to be using your cell phone to play a lot, you may want to get this just because it's going to save you a lot of thumb work. And like I stated before, you if you don't really want to cover up your whole entire screen, uh, screen when playing a game like this. I know it seems a little silly. But when you're doing big dungeon raids and you're getting in your war bands and you're gonna go play together as a group, you're gonna have a few things going on. One, you're probably gonna be connected via voice call or some sort of a, a communication device to talk to with your teammates and, and to communicate on a battle, as well as you wanna be able to see all of the screen. Having a device like a Kishi uh, playing on your PC, playing on uh, you know some sort of a device that doesn't cover your entire screen, it's going to be very beneficial to you to really dominate the next uh the, the next content the next whatever the case may be that you're trying to accomplish in diablo immortal i will leave a link down below for this device here there's a lot of people who have already done guides and reviews on it i highly recommend you do a little bit of research though before you purchase this if it's going to be something that you want to get definitely click the link buy the product hopefully you enjoy it i would definitely have something ready to go though before diablo immortal launches because there's nothing worse than getting into a game and going, man, this is gonna be fun. And then you, you get a little burnt out, right? Because uh, maybe it's not exactly what you want or you really need that other device. And once Diablo Immortal launches, well, who's to say that a lot of these devices that we're ordering and getting are gonna be readily, readily available. Uh, I feel like a lot of people at 30 million, to, uh, I wanna say we're almost to 50 million free downloads. I mean, with that kind of downloads, chances are a lot of people are going to be running out there and grabbing these devices so you definitely don't want to be one of the ones who's left out in the cold because you waited until launch all right the next topic on this uh because i like i said the thumbs are fine obviously the key she's going to help you we talked about the ps4 the xbox controller that definitely will help you as well approved phone list let's go ahead and let's go talk about the approved phone list real quick um before i move on to some of the other major topics such as the minimum requirements what kind of phones to be using how to test your phone and whatnot, because I feel like you really need to know the system requirements before you can really get into that kind of information. So notice one here, we have iOS. iOS is the easiest one to know if your phone's gonna work or not work. Essentially, if you have iPhone 6S and newer, it'll work. Um, iPhone doesn't have a whole lot of flexibility when it comes to this kind of things. You have, I mean, you have the SEs, you have the pluses. I know you have some different version models. However, iOS is pretty linear, right? Apple keeps that really simple for us so as long as you have an iphone 6s and newer and ios 11 then you can play the game that's awesome great for you and you're uh, you're off to the races there's definitely a razor device there's other devices that you can use as well with your apple device that'll attach so you're not limited okay now this is where it gets a little complicated because then we get into windows and we get into android i'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna cover android for right now i'm gonna segue into windows in a little bit okay android Android 5.0 and higher. So what does this mean? So essentially when you have an Android cell phone, which I do myself, I'm, I'm personally, I'm a big fan of Android. I'll probably never go back to iTunes or Apple products again. Uh, it is what it is. I didn't mind them. They weren't bad. I just like the customization that comes with Android myself, um, you know, and I'm a big Samsung fan anyways, though. A lot of my products are Samsung related. So having a Samsung device that just ties into everything for me, it's a no brainer. However, Samsung isn't the only brand. We have Nokia, we have um, we have Hawaii, we have LG, we have Google Pixels. I mean, we have, we have so many different brands of Android phones. So these get very convoluted very quickly. So here's how we're gonna break this down for you. Operating system is Android 5.0 and higher. You can see this on your device. If you go to the about section on your device, it's usually under the settings tab, more info or about, depending on what brand of phone that you have, you can usually see what operating system you're currently running. If you're operating on Android 5.0 and higher, there's a good chance this is gonna work for you. 
The other part of this is some cell phones, uh, even newer ones, are not going to be compatible even though they run on Android 5.0 and higher because the processor is not going to be large enough to be able to keep up with the game. So it's not going to allow you to play it. Uh, also notice that the processor is a Snapdragon 660 and a Xenos uh, 9611 and higher. If you Google your, your current device and you say, what is the processor? So say, for example, I have my um, Samsung Galaxy Ultra 22. If I say Google that, what the processor is in it, it'll tell me what it is. And then you can use that as a comparison to these minimum requirements to see if it's above it. That's essentially what you're going to want to see. These, once again, are the minimum requirements. Now, just because these are on the list and your device may fall underneath this does not mean that you're going to have the best experience as well. So definitely keep that in mind when you're playing on a device. If you're going, huh, do I need to upgrade this or do I need to change this? Oh, no, it meets the minimum requirements. I'm fine. Just because you see the words minimum requirements and you pass does not mean the game is going to run perfectly smooth or beautiful in, uh, in all aspects, right? You definitely want to keep that in mind and be conscientious of this before you uh, get into the game and go, man, this sucks. Well, depending on what kind of device you're using, it may not suck. It may actually be a great game. However, your device just cannot handle it properly. Also notice that you do need two gigs of gigabytes of RAM for the game. Um, this is becoming pretty standard uh, for a lot of higher end mobile games. Uh, also the video card. So cell phones have video cards. I couldn't for the life of you tell, tell you any difference between video cards and cell phones. I could on PCs. When it comes to these, uh, you know, it's hopeless. I have no idea. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you, but luckily during the beta, the lovely community that is Diablo immortal took a lot of time. They knew this was going to be a question. They knew this was going to be an issue and they knew people like myself aren't going to know Android video cards. They do not going to know Android anything for processors, right? I know my my phone's new enough to play the game and that's that's all I need to know. However, you the consumer who's going to play this game, you need to have more information. So luckily, if you Google uh, just Diablo Immortal phone compatibility list, the community on Reddit did a good job of actually just trying it. They tested. They did a lot of test it, uh, testing to figure out, okay, well, what's going to work? What's not going to work? As you can see here, um, they filled this out and said, okay, we'll fill this out. Let us know what do you have? Um, you know, like device models, like Samsung Galaxy S8, a, uh, you know, a seven, a six, whatever the case may be. And they figured out what's going to be compatible, compatible. The biggest thing to note here is going to be the processors. And that's why I was bringing it up earlier is because processors are super important. They process the data for the game. If your processor isn't fast enough, it's not going to be able to compile the data to be able to do big live action fights. You saw at the very beginning of the video, the, the background uh, imaging, that's the kind of quality graphics you're going to be getting with Immortal. And that was on the beta release. That's not for actual launch, which is probably going to get a little bit above as far as the quality of them, right? So we already have a list going here of what's going to be available and what's going to work. Now notice that we also have a list of what's not going to work. Um, I definitely highly recommend that you do a little bit of this research on your own. The purpose of this video is to really show you uh, a very broad spectrum idea of what you can be using, what you should be using and uh, how to test, but also to give you the series of information that you need to kind of get this moving forward. I will leave a link to this in the description as well. That way you have it in case you just want to be able to click on it and go to the data. Now, one last thing with this whole cell phone talk talking. So we have compatible processors, right? Which means we have compatible graphics cards. We don't have a whole lot of knowledge on the graphics cards. There's just not a whole lot out there because it's, it's mobile devices, graphics cards. However, there are applications that'll help you understand how is your phone going to perform for a game like this. So for those of you like myself who are big nerds and others who are massive, massive nerds, you will see, um, there's a 3D benchmark for your cell phone. Uh, I do 3D benchmarks on my own personal computer. Uh, before I upgraded to a 3080 Ti, I did a benchmark test to see what kind of games I could handle, what kind of frames per second I should be getting. I didn't like the results. I used that to kind of go get a 3080 Ti uh, graphics card, got it put in, and then I was able to tune it properly uh, to be nice and stable, as well as benchmarking it to, tell, uh, to give me the best possible usage or use case for my graphics card. 
3d mark the gamers benchmark is going to be a little different than that but it's going to be very helpful because one it's a free app so anyone can do it um it's fairly easy to navigate and the reason why we bring this up is because it's going to give you a score it's going to tell you about how your phone rates now as you look at how your phone rates you can also compare to other devices so say for example if you have a lower end device and uh, you're curious how well it will compare uh, a lot of times you can run these tests and then you can find the data to compare this from like a Galaxy S8 to a Galaxy S10 to a Galaxy S22. There were different results. Um, a, a group of my friends and I, we did a bunch of testing um, and basically we found out that the iPhone, even though I had a brand new, brand new Galaxy S22 Ultra um, Pro or yeah, the Ultra, brand new out of the box was actually less powerful than the um, iPhone 13. We were like, oh, well, that's an interesting test. We were able to figure this out using this 3D benchmark. And um, with that being said, you can take this and kind of compare. If you are benchmarking higher than the minimum specs, then chances are the game's gonna run pretty smooth for you. Uh, so these are kind of tools that you can be using to understand and be ready for what can be useful, as well as it's just a fun app to have in general. I mean, we're all competitive, right? So by using something like this, you can kind of benchmark your own device and say, hey, this is where I'm at, where are you at, and uh, so on and so forth. You know, get that competitiveness going, so that way we can really have a lot of fun in Diablo Immortal. Uh, so that definitely is going to be something to talk about. Now, the other thing that I want to bring up here is we have, well, we have compatible devices, like I mentioned. We also have PC client specifications. So what this means for us is there's going to be a PC client. So as you notice, there is a Windows tab, which I love the fact that they're gonna be doing this on Windows. I feel like that was a really, really good, strong move by them. If they didn't have Windows uh, or PC client, honestly, I think this game would be kind of a, um, I wouldn't say it's like, it would be a flop because it is amazing. However, I would think it wouldn't be as popular because there isn't a PC client. And a lot of people who are playing Diablo wanna play this on a PC client, not on their cell phone. Me personally, I love the fact that this is gonna go from PC to cell phone and back and forth perfectly fine and seamless because I am someone who travels for work. I am someone who goes to work and I wanna be able to play a game for, you know, on my 15 minute breaks, on my 30 or on my hour to 30 minute lunches. You know, I wanna be able to do those kinds of things, but I don't wanna be limited to only playing it like that. And I don't always wanna be limited to using a third party, third party software to play a game. I am currently a mobile game content creator. I am no stranger with any of the emulators, whether it's gonna be Nox Player, LD Player, Bluestacks. I'm familiar with all those emulators and they all have their unique characteristics. However, a dedicated PC client for the game is gonna be pretty seamless in my opinion in comparison to the cell phone because they're gonna be built by the same builder. Um, so that makes this game even more powerful and more ease of use. So that way you can really go hard on your PC when you're at home and then you can take the game with you. And it reminds me a lot of like the, like how PlayStation tried to do this with the, uh, you know, with, with their devices where you could say, I'm playing the game, I'm playing the game on my PlayStation. Oh, I got to go somewhere grab your, um, I can't remember what the device was called, but you pick it up and you can reconnect to your PlayStation and you can continue your game on a handheld device. Um, they kind of took that idea and I like it. I think that was a very good idea. I feel like Sony didn't implement it as well and that's why it never became super popular, but doing this with a game like Diablo Immortal is gonna be super popular and super helpful. But what you need to be aware of when you're gonna be playing this on a PC is there are requirements. Um, notice once again, like I mentioned before that 3D benchmark, just because you hit the minimum requirements does not mean the game's gonna run smoothly. It does not mean that it's gonna be perfect for you. It does not mean that you're gonna be able to move forward in the game and enjoy it. I would do wanna point out that the specs for this aren't super high. Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, Windows 11 all work properly. That's awesome. Um, most games anyways, you can run them in compatibility mode in older versions and they work better anyways because the older versions were more stable. That's no surprise. Um, so any processing or any operating system that you're probably running is going to work. Uh, processor, Intel Core i3 AMD FX8100. Uh, those are oof. If you are running a PC with those kind of a processors, um, it's probably really slow. It's probably extremely slow. Um, even if you have an like i3k that you're that you're overclocking it's gonna be super slow but the fact that, that is the minimum requirement 
tells me that most PCs are going to work. If you have a toaster for a PC, like we like to call it, if you have a really bad PC, uh, you may be able to play anyways. It may not it may not matter. Now, they do recommend that you use the Core I, or an i5 processor or an AMD Ryzen 5. Uh, computers with those kind of processors are going to run you anywhere between $200 to $400 uh, for a very basic, very, very, very basic memory um, or basic memory option for those type of con or PCs. So keep that in mind. If you have an older PC and you would like to play this on PC client, you may have to upgrade a little bit and it could cost you anywhere between 200 to 600, I'd say is a, a good ballpark number for something that is under the recommended specifications and is gonna last you a little longer than your typical base integrated everything on any other game or any other, con or any other uh, PC console, so to speak. Um, next thing to note here is memory, four gigabytes of RAM, versus eight gigabytes of RAM is recommended. Uh, this should be pretty standard. Most computers are gonna come standard with four to eight anyways. Honestly, eight to 16 is gonna be becoming more and more of the norm. And even then 16 to 32 is, uh, you know, if that's pro status, that's uh, myself, I run 32 gigs of RAM. I'll be upgrading to 64 gigs of gigabytes of RAM. Um, it helps, it definitely helps, but the requirements here aren't terrible. They're not, they're not super, they're not super hard. They're not, um, they're honestly, they're pretty minimal. I like it. I like the fact that this is going to be the PC client of specifications. Uh, so definitely take some time and look, make sure that your device is going to be compatible. That's the biggest thing. Also, the internet, broadband internet connection. So this means you just got to connect to the internet. They don't require you to have a certain speed when playing the game, which is great because a lot of people who are going to be limited living out in the country, living in other countries, so to speak, that cannot connect using gigabyte down connections you're no longer limited to not being able to play the game. Now, I know this video has been going on for a while. It was a little bit of a longer one, but I did really wanted to cover all this information for you. So just as a quick wrap up, I want you to be aware that you can not buy any externals for this game, play it on your cell phone, your thumbs are gonna work okay. Uh, PS4, Xbox controller support is approved. Um, we can speculate on a lot of other devices, but I don't wanna do this because nothing has been confirmed. So I don't want to tell you, hey, go buy this, this, and this, because at the end of the day, it's not 100% confirmed, and I never want to lead you guys down the wrong path. Also, we have the approved phone list that we have that was tested during beta. Uh, we also have the minimum requirements for cell phones. This will help you make a more educated uh, thought and, and decision on if your, your cell phone's going to work. We talked about the Razer Kishi for adding to your cell phone. We talked about the uh, 3D benchmark. We also talked about the PC client. So hopefully between one of these devices, we've been able to help you sort out and understand if you're gonna be able to play this game and how smoothly you're gonna be able to play this game. Also make sure to go join the Aftershock United community. We have a massive community that we are building. Um, when I say massive, I mean, we have a website, we're gonna have an API, we're gonna have an application that you're gonna be able to download on your cell phone within the next two months. Um, we are compiling all this data, this data right here that is on the sheet is actually gonna get prettied up and made look extremely, extremely well. And it's gonna be all presented on the website. Um, definitely go join the Discord community. We have over 800 people already. We are going to be going super hard to be super competitive on this game. And there's about eight or nine content creators now that are going to be working together to bring you the best content out there. So definitely come join us. It'll be a lot of fun. We're making a very fun, unique community. I can't wait to see you guys there and talk with you directly. Have a good rest of your day. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.